Innovation today is increasingly going beyond the confines of formal research and development. It's redefining everything. It's being seen as a means of creating sustainable and cost-effective solutions for people at the bottom of the pyramid. Our next speaker wears many hats, that of an innovator, an inventor, an entrepreneur, advisor to governments, and green thinker. He holds close to 100 worldwide patents and has published and lectured widely, widely across the globe. He has recently been appointed the founding commissioner of the UN, Nation, of the UN Broadband Commission for Digital Development and is chairman of the National Innovation Council set up by the Prime Minister of India. He is credited with having laid the foundation of India's technology and telecommunications revolution way back in the 1980s. And he is, befittingly, joining us over video conference from Chicago, the USA. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Sam Pichoda. I want to thank the organizers for giving me this unique opportunity. I want to especially thank Vinit Rai at Sankal. Recognizing that Sankal has already spent seven years in building vibrant ecosystem in the social enterprise space. I want to compliment Sankal, wish them all the best, and then use this opportunity to essentially talk about three main topics. One, National Innovation Council, our vision, our program, a little bit of our activities. Talk about the innovation fund that we are trying to set up and see how that will help entrepreneurs and innovators at the bottom of the pyramid for inclusive growth. And three, talk a little bit about the public information with focus on connecting 250,000 panchas to broadband and what it would really mean to the entrepreneurs and innovators in rural India. As you know, National Innovation Council was set up by the Prime Minister about six months ago. The idea was to really recognize the fact that innovation is going to be very critical going forward in India's sustainable growth. Recognizing the fact that we are already growing at the rate of 9%. And we really need, on one hand, to focus on skill development, and on the other hand, innovate to be globally competitive, to improve productivity, efficiency, reduce cost. and really sustain the kind of growth that we expect. All of these things are really connected with three fundamental challenges in India. One, disparity. Disparity between rich and poor, urban, rural, educated and uneducated. Two, demography. We have 550 million young below age of 25. How do we create opportunities for this generation? How do we create 10, 15 million new jobs every year, year after year? How do we provide the right kind of skill set, education, health facilities, nutrition, infrastructure? All of these are going to be key challenges 
for the next few decades. And three, expedite the process of development. Almost everything is happening in India, but perhaps not happening at the pace we would like. To address the, these three challenges, one, Prime Minister recognized that we need to focus on knowledge and as a result set up a National Knowledge Commission almost six years ago to essentially focus on access to knowledge, education, science and technology, creation of knowledge, which include innovation, entrepreneurship, application of knowledge in agriculture, small and medium scale industries, health, traditional knowledge, and finally the use of knowledge in governance. Some total about 27 different subjects were looked at by the Knowledge Commission. 300 recommendations were submitted to the Prime Minister and a lot of this work is in the process at various ministries. The next big chunk has to be on innovation. So the Innovation Council was set up with specific tasks of laying out a roadmap for the next decade of innovation. The President of India has already declared 2010 to 2020 as the decade of innovation in the country. We have in the National Innovation Council about 16, 17 people with different backgrounds from industry, academics, government, innovators, businessmen, scientists. We had an opportunity to meet about three, four times, and we essentially decided to focus on five aspects of innovation. One, look at innovation more as a platform. During our discussions, we recognized that world over best brains are busy solving problems of the rich who really don't have many problems to solve. As a result, problems of the poor really don't get the kind of talent it deserves. So we decided that we need to focus on innovation as a platform. Recognize that innovation doesn't take place just in science and technology laboratories. We need innovations in government, social sector, education, health, and many other areas. Two, we felt that we ought to focus on innovations at the bottom of the pyramid for inclusive growth, which would demand clear focus on access, affordability, and sustainability. Three, we realize that we need to create right kind of ecosystem for the innovation initiatives, which include risk capital, understanding of intellectual property, looking at various clusters in the country, see how we can improve interface between universities, industries, and our scientific labs, creating the right kind of network of people, institutions, and providing digital connectivity as part of the ecosystem. Then we realize that we also need to define proper drivers, such as affordability, such as durability versus disposability, and finally, we need to create discourse on innovation so people begin to ask questions about everything we do today. Only through questions we'll be able to think outside the box. So when we decided to focus on these five areas, 
we realize that we need to come up with actionable program. As a result, we wrote to all the chief ministers to see if they would set up state level innovation council. Because each state has their own core competence. Then we have written to all of the ministers to set up sectorial councils. We want to set up about 100 sectorial councils on biotech, nanotech, agriculture, wireless communication, cancer, councils. Domain experts will play an important role in laying out a roadmap for the next decade. Similarly, we have identified 50 different industry clusters in the country with the help of CII, industry group, and FICI. These clusters focus on activities like textile, pharmaceuticals, leather industry, diamond. In each of these clusters, we have a large number of industries predominantly small and medium scale. And most of these people haven't had chance to focus on innovations. So we really want to seed innovations, connect them with the right university research program, provide incubators in a box, educate them on patents, copyright, trademarks, create ecosystem for innovation, at these clusters. The key initiative that we have been working on for last three, four months relates to creating a billion dollar innovation fund for inclusive growth. Essentially focusing on bottom of the pyramid kind of activities. This fund would be initially using the government capital, very little. It will bring in private and institutional money. And our goal right now is to really create four clusters, north, south, east, west. Put in teams in these four clusters, give them specific funds, create certain interfaces, ecosystem capabilities, processes, teams, and then see how we begin to use this fund. Maybe some areas will use more than others. We will also create little competition. And the idea is to seed a lot many more entrepreneurs with innovative ideas to build businesses. We realize that small businesses have a lot to learn. They have a lot to learn about good business practices, ethical business practices. They need to learn to keep their accounts properly, be honest, transparent, open, understand the rules of the game, pay their taxes, 